<laughs> Got it. Uh, I'm great this evening. How's everyone? Doing fine. Praising Excellent. God. <laughs> All right. I hear that. You know, the praises of the righteous availeth much and addeth no sorrow along with the blessings. Amen. <laughs> I'm here. God bless you, everybody. How's everybody doing? Let me see. God bless. I just want to thank the Lord for being here this evening. Um, apologize for getting on a little late. Um, got a, uh, off of a uh, detail a little bit later than I expected today, but I was able to be with the Lord. And, and as I spoke with uh, my my counterparts and my brothers uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, that sometimes when we apply ourselves into what God is calling us to do, that we have to respond in a way that sometimes takes us outside of um, our comfortability to make sure that we can get close to God in a way that uh, not only feeds this spirit man, but also the you know, the separation between the physical and spiritual sometimes is needed. You know, that's why I think sometimes we, uh, we go on a fast to, to gain focus and to gain knowledge of where God wants us to put our faith and place our, our belief in ways that takes us away from what our physical man sometimes can be used to, to gain our focus. That's not my message tonight, but I felt like I needed to say that because sometimes our comfort zones can put us in a place to where we don't allow ourselves to separate ourselves from the day-to-day uh, the -day things that cause us either to focus or to look away from what our focus should be. And I just thank the Lord tonight because, you know, when we think of all the things that God has, has added to us in the knowledge of him and the time that we spent with him, then that will give us the grace and the mercy to know how to accept things moving forward and in a way that God will have his perfect will. Uh, also, I would just like to, to, uh, to give thanks for the saints that are moving in a way that, that God is pleased. And, you know, I always say that when you, when you hear the growth, and the anointing and the ones that you know and that you've prayed for, then God will show you uh, what it is that comes from that particular growth or time with the Lord that gives you understanding, great understanding and knowledge. As Pastor Harris prays about for everybody to gain a deeper understanding and a deeper uh, presence and understanding of God's presence in their lives. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Because when you think of it, it's something that puts you in a place that is sometimes out of your own capability to think on the things of what you've experienced that has given you the wisdom to, to then apply what you've learned through your experience. And, you know, I heard a lot growing up that experience teaches you wisdom. And once you get to a place, you have to apply that wisdom. And it may find you in a place where it's not always comfortable. It's not always, you know, a place where you can just, you know, have the strength even sometimes to raise your own hands into the Lord or to the heavens and say, you know, I thank you or reflect on the things that you went through to get you to a place where it makes you get to an understanding where you can say, Lord, I understand. I thank you, you know, so without, um, you know, thinking too deep into what is being applied to get you or to get us even to look up, you know, because sometimes we can think it's so far off for us to see exactly what it is we're supposed to see out of what we're gaining understanding through the experience that teaches us the wisdom to be able then to share to someone else based on our experience and based on the knowledge of Christ that we're gaining understanding for. So I would just like to pray real quick because, you know, sometimes experiences that we go through, we don't expect. And I told him I was coming this, uh, 
this Wednesday and I, I'm on schedule for this Sunday. But I told him I was coming with something that may be a little different. But the perspective is that if we know the possibilities and the capabilities of what we've been giving in our anointing and through our Holy Ghost, which we walk with, then we will understand what we're to understand, what we're to gain, and what we're to be able to share then based on the wisdom and the knowledge that God has added to us in whatever season we find ourselves. Amen. Can somebody say amen? This is a prayer I want to pray. Dear Lord, I thank you tonight for this Bible study. I thank and praise you for everybody that's on tonight, Lord God. I thank you for giving me the uh, wisdom and understanding to break this these few scriptures down into nuggets and, and pieces of your anointing that will inspire as well as give reflection to what it is you have for me to say tonight, Lord God. I also decrease that you can increase through the words that you've given me tonight to be able to bring to the saints and everybody that's on the line tonight, Lord God, I'm asking you to go into each and every place, Lord God, and have your perfect will. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus, and I ask you for the uh, understanding and proper way to give it tonight, Lord God, and that the people will be blessed through it. Amen. I thank you right now. So with, with some of the things that, that we find in preparation for even preparing for the word is that sometimes we go through things that are in a place of, of uh, sometimes it could feel like disbelief or it could feel like, you know, why am I going through this? Why do I have to experience this? And like I said in, in, in a little bit of the opening of what I, what I was expressing is that sometimes we can find ourselves where we don't automatically have the understanding or we feel like we don't have the answer to what we are experiencing. And in a moment, that's why I said in a moment of a twinkling in an eye, things can change in a way to where, you know, <laughs> what we ask for and what we receive is not always you know, congruent to what we believe for. Uh, I may have said, like, what does that mean, uh, Pastor? What does that mean, Prophet? Well, sometimes we can ask for things and it doesn't come in the way that, that we expect it to, but God is answering. It's just like the story of the guy that, the guy that prayed for, for deliverance and, he, and, and the Lord sent him four or five different things to relieve him of what he was experiencing, but he passed each, each opportunity of either relief or deliverance because he didn't think it was the right, <laughs> the right way, or it was coming through the right source, or it didn't look the way that it, it should have, but he brushed it off and, and ended up not really being delivered into what he prayed God for, and God sent him five different answers. Now, why would, he, why would we, you know, sometimes I've heard that story and never really understood it fully, but that's the thing where we get to a place where we gain understanding through experience that gives us wisdom to at, at one at some point we have to say, okay, Lord, I know this is you and go with it instead of always trying to figure it out ourselves or find a, a, a real way to understand what's happening in the moment. <laughs> God will send a, send a deliverer. And because it doesn't seem like it's, it's proper or it's coming from the right place, we may brush it off, <laughs> even in situations that aren't comfortable. And I have a joy message. I feel like I always do, but I just don't don't take what I'm saying wrong because, you know, we experience the things that we don't expect. But the result may come from understanding that we have to go through that to find the answer. You know what I'm saying? It's to find the answer of what we pray for, we may have to go through something for God to say, hey right here in this moment this is for you <laughs> and if we find it to where it's maybe something like well wait i wasn't expecting that <laughs> i was i didn't pray for that and then we can get caught up in not receiving the answer to what we pray for but maybe it's in lieu of the answer amen because Sometimes we're like, well, is God hearing me yes he heard you but maybe he's coming maybe there's he has the answer 
or maybe he's going to take you through something to gain your focus or to gain our focus on what he needs to get through the answer. What's coming through the answer? If he just said, okay, here you go, bam. Will we be excited? Oh, yes, we can get excited. We can do all the things that, that speak to us, understanding that it's God. But sometimes he has to take us the long, a long way to, ex to see how we're going to exercise our patience to get to what the ultimate answer is or to the deliverance of what we've asked God for. We pray for our family members. We pray for each other. But sometimes it doesn't show up when we think when it should or how it should or if it should come through this way or that way. Sometimes we just have to exercise the patience and understand that, well, maybe God is, is seeing how I'm going to respond to what he's bringing, what he has already brought me through that I don't see the end of right now. This is the thing. Because I've, I've, I've seen prayers. I've seen prayer warriors. I've seen miracles. Man, I've seen a guy who had a, a, a stub foot with a four-inch heel on his shoe <laughs> walk out of church without the shoe with no limp. <laughs> you understand? I was probably maybe in nine, ten years old when I saw that. You understand? So I've seen miracles. We've all miracles. We've all seen God work. But how long? I mean, I can't sit here and tell you how long that man prayed that God would, would fix his, his limp and, and, and diminish the size of his heel so he could walk flat-footed and know that God was the one who healed him. I don't know how long he prayed, but I saw the night when it happened and God extended his foot and, and he walked out of church with the shoe in his hand. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm nine years old, 10 years old in a church service where people are, are, are you know, you talk about the Holy Ghost uh, knock down, drag out service. I was in, I was in that. When I saw, but how long, how long did that man pray? We're not talking about him dragging himself into the church up to a pool through throngs of people and, and, and reaching for the hymn. He, 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 he hobbled his way for years till he got to the point where God met him at that altar. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes we don't know. And maybe it was a, uh, maybe the third or fourth time that he had, had went up to the altar. Maybe it was the 10th time that he went up to there to believe in, believe in somebody that could believe with him that God would heal him. <laughs> all types of things, but guess what? <laughs> we can't, I couldn't, I couldn't measure the time that what he believed and how many times he prayed to God to heal him, but God did that night. So we can say it's a, it's a buildup to when you meet, you meet your circumstance where the healer is or where the deliverer happens to be, whether it's somebody that's being used through the power of God to bring a deliverance to somebody else in that moment and i don't want you to think i'm not uh um if, if uh pastor could get romans 8 22 for me pastor harris if you could uh get romans 8 22 for me real quick and then uh sister petty if you could get me first peter 2 and 11 i would appreciate it if i could get some help because sometimes on this thing i would like to be able to hear and and, and have some uh call and response if possible i hear you yeah let me know when yeah go ahead read that romans 8 22 for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now mm. yeah so if if it was the fact that the read it one more time pastor please <laughs> For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Together until now. Mm -hmm. We travail through the pain of whatever we experience. This is what I'm talking about. If we, if we have know that we can travail and get through things to get us to a point. That's that point I'm talking about. We don't know how long it takes for somebody to believe God for something that they never experienced, but they believe God for. <laughs> the, man, the man walked into the church for probably four or five years, 
like this. You, you see what I'm doing? He's walking in there, going to his seat like this. How many times, I, I can't believe how many, I can't even imagine how many times he prayed and asked the Lord. Because I guarantee you from my own experience and seeing and, and being able to experience the miracle working power of God in that, in that church as a little kid, how many times that man walked in there like this? And he used to say hi to everybody. Hey, brother Sam, how you doing, little man? All right. And he would always acknowledge everybody, but he would just be going up there like this, <laughs> limping up to his spot next to my uh, my auntie and, 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 and sitting up on the front row on the right side of the church. And guess what he would do? He would pick up his bass guitar and he would get so anointed sometimes that he would overrun the organ player, the piano player, the guitar <laughs> player. Everybody was there. We get his worship. I remember his worship through his instrument and what he was given to praise God was sometimes would overrun. But he was travailing. He was going through. I got this trying situation, but I will prevail through it so I can give God praise, not only in his worship, but in the instrument he was given to play unto God in the building, in the services. I mean, choir practices, because I was there for all of them. And I would always see him. He was faithful. <laughs> he was faithful, man. And, it, and, and he would believe God. He'd be sitting there praying as other people were getting blessed, as other people were getting, uh, the anointing would fall in such a way and healings would happen. And I would, I would be sitting next to him because I'd be sitting next to my aunt, my little clarinet that I got from my older brothers. I learned how to play clarinet in the church pews, not in some school band or on some notes or instruments. I was sitting next to my auntie playing the clarinet while she was playing her saxophone. Wow. <laughs> you understand? This guy would be sitting there in the anointing because there was a guy named Professor Webb who used to play the organ and he would get so anointed that he just put his hand down and be going top tier to low tier, not even looking, his eyes closed. He would be, what's your that? And he would, sometimes he would stop playing just to raise his hands in a moment and then go right back to the shout. <laughs> and I never could imagine what he was going through in those moments when the, the, the anointing and the spirit of God would get so high in the church. And he would be sitting there and I wish I, I know somebody from back then has the videos. He would be sitting there and he'd be playing. And then all of a sudden he just raises his hands and just give God worship. That's what I'm talking about. But well, you have to sometimes prevail. My mom, pastor used to always say, perseverance will make you conquer. And if it doesn't conquer, you will become stronger until it does. That's why the focus has to be set such as a flint to where when we worship God, we know it is God that we are reaching and we are touching in that moment. This is called, I, I understand the, the travailing part of the last scripture that we wrote, uh, uh, Pastor read into our hearing, but sometimes perseverance will be the, the presence of God that you can, you can really begin to see and touch in a way that will make it completely exactly what it's supposed to be in that moment in that time that we say season in that season in that moment where we need him the most he shows up and it doesn't we can't ever maybe take track of how many times we prayed for one thing to get an answer <laughs> or to get to a place where we understand exactly what god wants us to in that moment or through that situation or circumstance that will give us the power to travail, to travel over something or to go past something until God meets us at that place to give us the answer of what we're travailing in and believing God for. Read, can you read that one more time, Pastor 8.20 to the Romans 8.22, please? For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Now, okay. So even in the groaning, if that's what gives God's ear, a bended ear towards us, then even without even being able to pray or ask God, the thought that comes before the groaning, the groaning 
is enough to grab God's attention to say, what is it? What does my child need in this moment? You understand what I'm saying? Because even if we've grown until the moment of deliverance and we can never, never, if, our, if, if he knows our heart and gives us the thoughts, and all we can do is say, sometimes we say, mm, mm, mm. or Lord, oh my goodness, whatever that is, if that sounds like a, mm, like a groan or like, oh Lord, do you feel my pain? Yes, he does. But even when we can't find the words, <laughs> we have to understand that even in our groaning is an attention grabber to the holiest one, the one that we believe in, the one that we walk with daily. He hears our groaning is enough. Thank you, Jesus, for him to hear us in the time of need, in a time where we may feel all alone, can't find the words. What if we get frustrated and they can't find the words to say, Lord, uh, we can't find the time or the, the words to say, Lord, I'm praying for myself right now in this moment. All we can do is say, oh, man, or mm, it's Jesus. All we can do is call on Jesus. And even in that, that he hears us. Come on, come on. When I read that and I was going through some things that, to make me say, well, Lord, I know that you, you believe in me. I know that I believe in you, but I couldn't find the words. <laughs> I couldn't find the words. All I could do is say, Lord, I'm like, oh my goodness, Lord. And even in that, he knew what I, what I was thinking and what I needed and was able to deliver in the moment where I needed him the most. Amen. Let's go to yeah. let's go to First Peter two eleven, sister. First Peter two eleven. Um, this says, "Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul." Right. So even in my groaning. I might could go to my flat. I could say things that I don't say all the time. I could want to be able to shake the walls and the foundation around me out of anger or frustration of not getting an answer. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I, I could imagine that whether, you know, those of us that are com that are so saved that we don't go back to our former ways of being frustrated or find a way to just find the most clearest path to the greatest understanding that we wouldn't find ourselves leaning to our flesh to get to either be frustrated, upset, or out of the way, or seemingly of how we should respond as Christians. <laughs> I heard somebody preach on Sunday that their, 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 their child tested them in the way to where they didn't show them the love of God or they didn't respond in a godly way. And I'm sure all of us can relate and be real and say, you know, I've had a moment where I leaned a little bit to my fleshly self to yeah. response based on what I was experiencing in the moment, mm -hmm. in the moment. And I just say that even Read it one more time. I'll, I'll get to this point. Please read it one more time. This is going to be great. I promise you, we're going to get something out. Amen. <laughs> yes. It says, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Our soul is being, sometimes being tested to the the flesh, the man, the man, the man, the woman, the child, the little king, the big king, the grown-up king, the little queen, the big queen. The flesh wants to turn, could in a situation be easy to turn and be like, wait a minute, you talking to me? How, who do you think you are? <laughs> Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But that's the, where Man, it could be easily turned back into something that would get you to look the other way or respond a certain way that would take you back. Somebody, take me back. 
Take me back, dear Lord, where I yes. First you understand? receive. First mm. receive. Sometimes it's not always how far you get down the road to bring you right back to the beginning. You're like, wait a minute. I'm years past this, Lord. I ain't did nothing like this in a long time. But you may the circumstances may find yourself to where I feel like I'm in my flesh. I'm surrounded by sin. I ain't used these words in 20 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, but in the response of that, are saying, wait a minute, I, this is not of me. This is not of the Lord. This is not something that I have. I should be responding based on where I'm at. But sometimes, like, <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're gonna get down the road tonight. But what I'm saying is this, is that sometimes the things that come and can so easily befall us could take us back to a season where we thought we would never go back to. But that's where the grace of God comes in to give us the understanding and the power to choose how we respond in a moment. And it could be in a twinkling. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out situation. It could just be in a moment, a flash, a twinkling of an eye to where you go back and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> where is it really? Where am I really? And why do I have to be experiencing this now? Why? <laughs> Let's just be real candid tonight. We find ourselves experiencing something that'd be like, man, I've been, I ain't been down this road and I don't know how long. And mm -hmm. it could cause us to be perplexed. And maybe why would I be being tested by this person? I done gave them prayers when they didn't know I was praying for them. I've been given, I put myself on the outside looking in so I could make sure that I was in the will of God. Now I find myself faced with something that is so unbelievably, number one, uncomfortable. And that takes me back to a place to where I don't need to return. I don't look, I, there's nothing I need to look back to to take me back there. Come on, somebody. Come on. Why, why, why get allow anger and frustration to come in in a way to where I have to then check myself and ask Lord for forgiveness based on even how my thought process found me in that moment? <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about, say amen. Cause I know I amen. mean we all have had have 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 come a little bit short. Amen. I calling that we we amen. Amen. That, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> if if I am out if I am out of reproach, then I will be I, I may as well get go get uh <laughs> go get something that if I can throw a rock at that it'll bounce back at me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If I'm out of, if I'm, if I'm going to throw the first stone at myself tonight, because I'm not calling nobody out. Trust me, that's not my style. But if I could just find a bouncing wall to throw something against and try to catch it or don't allow it to dodge me or, you know, allow myself to get out of the way of it, then I'll be able to throw the first stone to say, oh, I'm out. I'm without reproach and I'm so grand and so great but that's not that's not always the case and i don't want to say that i'm not in a perfect will and i'm not chase, chase, chasing for the perfection of god in my life i'll be the first one to say it <laughs> but what i'm saying is is that if with the strength of god we are able to adapt and respond in a way that is of god <laughs> see what i'm saying we're going to come around to a few things tonight where it'd be like well, that scripture sounds a little way. So, no, 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 no. It's it came because when I when I recognized even in myself, because they say open confession is good for the heart and the soul and the body and the Christian the in the Christian's life. So mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm without reproach and I don't ask forgiveness or I don't open openly confess that maybe I found myself in a place to where I had to understand fullness of this message to even be able to say it because as I'm preaching and giving the word of God to you it is coming back to me full fold okay so in the healing process of what we may experience through what we go through maybe God will give us a word to give us understanding and this is where I'm coming from tonight I would also ask that somebody will get uh if you can real quick uh the same two if you could get uh Hebrews, what is this here? 11, verse 3. Sister Petty, if you could grab that. Hebrews 11, 
Cube use what? 11, excuse uh -huh. me. Uh, 11? 11, verse 13. And pastor, if you could get Revelation 21, verse four, I'd appreciate it. I have an uh, 11, 13. Oh yeah, let's hear what that has to say. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. <laughs> Can you read that one more time? Mm -hmm. These all died in faith, yeah. not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Yeah. You know why that hit me so strong? It's because sometimes we could be traveling a road. This is why I think the story of, of the gentleman with the foot in my, in my younger years in church, he traveled a long time. And he could have been a pilgrim going through life with a certain situation or circumstance. But you know what I can honestly sit here and say tonight? Based on how many years I grew up around that man, and I don't even remember his name. I would have to ask him, one of the old saints that used to go to church when I was a kid what his name was. But I knew he played the bass. This, I'd never seen him without a smile on his face. I never seen him ready to just, just pick up his ax and go to chopping with what he was given and, and, the, and the position he was given and the instrument that he used to get himself in such an area of praise that you couldn't tell that he had an ailment even. You couldn't, sometimes you couldn't even notice the, like I said, the, the limp, the, the little hobble he had where sometimes he would get in help from himself, get ahead of himself, pastor, and his right foot would catch the carpet in a way. And sometimes he was on, but he would come right back up. His pilgrimage probably was way longer than I could even imagine now, yeah. growing up around this gentleman, but never showed <laughs> iota or one reflection of, He never, I never seen him come in like, he was always, oh yeah, we about to get to it today. He just had a, like, you know, he just had a joy about him, even through what he was going through. Read that, can you read that one time, Sister Petty, please? Just a minute. Okay. He never, he never looked like he was complaining or in Amen. his spirit place was complaining about his physical ailment or the pain maybe that he was, the uncomfortability that he was experiencing. We read that scripture one more time. Amen. Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Man, sometimes we can see, we can know people for years and years in our life and never understand what they're going to. But one thing we can also recognize through this scripture and through this message tonight is that sometimes we can go so far and we can we can we can be going through something we think, man, or see somebody going through something be like, man, why would you want that that needless, seemingly needless pain? But afar off where God is going to deliver them is how we see the full glory of what we are, see them experiencing that we pray for endlessly. And that's where I want to say this. Sometimes we could be praying for somebody. We could be seeing it for somebody. And it could seem so far, so far past so what we can see for them. 
praise the Lord. What we can see for them, even without their own capabilities. What we can see for them, even without their own capabilities. Where'd it go? You're muted. Um, how did I just want to uh, say that if you can't, if the echo is too much, I, I would, uh, <laughs> I would uh, stop for a second and allow it to go past. But what I what I was saying was sometimes we can be so far off, and and be believing God for people in our lives or people that we know and it could and even though we may not see it right away or right now it could be seem like it's so many years we've been praying and believing god for certain things but when it's the time and it's the set time and it allows it aligns with the timing of the lord it will show up and we will see the benefit of the prayers that we have, the petitions that we had put forward a few weeks ago. I said, we have to exercise patience to understand where we are and how that patience will then be perseverance that will conquer the things that we are believing God for. Perseverance will make you conquer. Pressure will make you praise the Lord. And if that makes sense, it's like going through something and they say, well, the praise of the Lord avails that much and has no sorrow. But guess what? There's pressure involved sometimes in those prayers that become veils that addeth no sorrow. So you get through the things that you're persevering through and that you, you believe God for it to be the answer and the conduit to release into the answer, and this is what I, I plan on bringing forward very soon. The answer of God will add no sorrow, add no pain, and the days and the and the, the months and sometimes the years before it gets there will allow us to prevail through the presence of that answer. You understand? God is preserving an answer and sometimes seeing how our patience is applied to give us the presence of God than to answer. Please hear me tonight. I'm not coming, uh, coming from a place of not understanding or experience in this moment. Because like I said, when it goes out, it has to land here so it can go out. So when I was researching, I was reading these scripts, I was like, there's so much that can be said to so much, but I just want to focus in on a few points with these five scriptures that I have tonight to go along with this message. Perseverance will make you conquer, and the presence of God will allow the answer to come. Because I know sometimes we can pray and believe God and trust God for things, and it seems like forever and a day before we get the answer. But what I what I was sharing with my, my brothers, I said I had to get to a place I had to find that secret place again in a special way to where I haven't maybe uh, engaged that part of, of the prayer or engaged that part of the anointing to get into a place where I could say, not only do I need you, but I need you to direct me. I need you to answer me right now. Open, open whatever it is. And this is sometimes where we have to get to. Sometimes we, we, if it wasn't for some of the examples that we have, even beyond those examples is where we can experience it for ourselves and find the patience and the presence of God and through that patience to persevere and then conquer. Perseverance will make us conquer those things for what we're believing God for those things that we pray for God for, pray to God for, those things that we are seeking answers for, perseverance will make you conquer and patience in the perseverance will push the faith into allowing God to speed it up. If you need an answer tonight, ask God to, to allow the, the presence of your faith, the presence of the anointing that you know you walk with to work in a way to where you can receive the answer. 
because of your patience, God will make you persevere and he will conquer those things that we are believing God for. Not only just for ourselves, but for the people that we have petitions before Christ for. Amen. Please believe me. Please believe me. Before you, uh, I'm going to ask you to read that again if you can, Sister mm -hmm. Petty. But before you, uh, before you read it, uh, Pastor, can you get uh, Revelations uh, 21, chapter 4, please? And then I'm going to ask Sister Petty to read Hebrews 11, 13, one more time into our hearing. All right. So 21 and verse 4 is what you yes. want. All right. Yes. Revelation. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, yes. nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. <laughs> Read it one more time, please. Did you hear that? Could somebody just say uh, amen, amen to that? Amen. Because well, the pain of something is sometimes the, the prelude to something that we don't even need to apply to our hearts or our body or our minds. Can you read it one more time, Pastor? That, this one really got me. And I'm not, I promise you I'm not going to be long tonight. Woo, the and God pain. shall wipe away <laughs> all tears from their <laughs> eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor cry, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Thank you, Jesus. We have to understand. Read it one more time. This this hit me so hard when I when I scrolled over there. Read it one more time, and I... and God shall wipe away all tears from their all eyes, tears. and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Mm. The former things are passed away. We have to begin to understand that the perseverance and the experience, this is what hit me and I wanted to get back to. It. What we have experiences teaches us the wisdom that we have now. And if there is any pain associated with that, this is what, I, what it made me feel. If there is any pain associated with anything that we have experienced, that God will wipe not only wipe the tears, but take the pain away of, of that thing, whatever it is in whatever capacity, however it hits, <coughs> the comforter has, has the ability to wipe our tears, mm -hmm. release that thing, and experience no more frustration or pain associated with that experience. So in my patience, in what I'm travailing and what I am going through, God will wipe my tears. Yes. He will erase the pain of the thing. Yes. And allow me to persevere in a way to where it just, frees me into some and some into the miraculous miracle working power every day not just in the moment where i find myself lord 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 and it's never to i've never never found myself why me lord why me we're not supposed to ask why because the giver of thoughts just told us that he will wipe our tears away we already heard into our hearing that he will give us the travail the oh man he will give us the power to travail that means travel over in a way to where <laughs> and this is the thing 
if 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 what availeth much and addeth no sorrow. So if I'm tra if I'm traveling and I have the recovering of God, then what can come anyway? What can come in? Nothing, because we already know the, the old slufa ain't got no power around here. He don't. But when we travel and we travel, we travel through with with the veil and the covering. <laughs> Read the last, read that scripture again one time. Now we got strength. We're travailing through. Now what Now what will he do? He said, oh, wipe our tears away. What did he say, Pastor? Can you read it one more time? And My God time. shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All tears. All tears. Not just There's one, not for just one thing or one little thing, then this big thing over here. All. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death, neither no. sorrow, nor <laughs> crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Well, no. That thing that's behind me, you know how we say, get behind me, say. That that's thing right. that's at the get behind me, say. We ain't got no reason to look back and say, well, you know, about two years ago, six months ago, man, three months ago, I had something. Last week, I had something. We ain't supposed to be doing this. My dad, my bishop would say when I was a kid, I, I was listening to something. <laughs> he said a rubbernecking Christian ain't got no reason <laughs> praying for nothing. He used to sit there rubbernecking, looking back, he just talk. He said a rubbernecking Christian usually talks out of the side of your neck. So be careful how you how you say things when you're looking back to what gives you the understanding of what you may be talking about in that moment. So ain't nothing back there, man. You used to get frustrated. Ain't nothing back there. What you keep looking back for? Mm. What you looking back for? You can't, I mean, what's in that backpack? What's in that, what's back down the road, back that down the road that you already passed that you want to go pick up and bring it to your future? Nah, because your future is now in God, in Christ. <laughs> he, he, if these steps we're walking out are, are have already been traveled by the gracious God that we serve and we claim daily as christians what does he want us looking back for to gain any i mean we can gain we can look back and say okay well man he brought me through that but not anything like man well when i went through that it was just so so tough <laughs> no, because we have to then travel and in that traveling forward he will give us the the veil and the covering of his almighty grace and mercy, which is renewed daily, saints. Not any anything that we got to say, well, I got to go put my fire together and then go get before the Lord. No, he's a daily. If it's renewed daily, then how far off is God from us? Not that far. If he wakes us up, if he gives us the breath in our body, he has to come by and say, wake up. I was hearing somebody say that the, uh, the 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 realm of sleep is where we're closest to God. I actually heard somebody say that the other day. That and it, and it, and, it, and I believe it to be true. But if you don't prepare yourself before you go to slumber, then you won't sleep a peaceful sleep. And I forget oh, the name. Man. Maybe you go to the fifth fifth dimension or whatever they were talking about. But when you get close to God in your slumbers, where sometimes we are the closest to God, because then I was thinking the other day, if I pray, if after I, heard, I saw that, that discussion, I said, well, if I pray and I prepare myself before I go to sleep, this is why they say don't go to sleep with an angry heart, because you could lose your way. You could be in, a, be in turmoil or, and you won't be travailing in your night slumber. But in that realm of sleep, when we're closest to God, maybe that is, you know, I was thinking this after I saw it, I said, well, I wonder if that is truly our secret place. <laughs> Why are you sleeping? While we are sleeping and in the slumber, what if that is our secret place? And that's where we truly find refuge. So if I don't prefer, prepare myself to go to sleep before God, <laughs> and that's where they say we are the closest to God in that realm of sleep. So that in that fasting, this is another how it came to me, Pastor. It may sound, I please somebody just say amen if this sounds a little different. But if, if in that slumber we are closest to God and we get up 
and we're breaking that fast <coughs> with breakfast. <laughs> Does also how we come up from there and what we put in our bodies first then reflect what, what we do when we break that fast? <laughs> And it may sound so different, but what I'm saying is that that ultimate power of understanding and peace and tranquility, maybe that's our slumber time is beyond our prayer portal or our, our, our secret places of worship and things like that. What if that also is our secret place to then uh, rest with God and in, 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 in that space, find an awakening at set time? to then be in the presence of God before we eat breakfast or before we start our day. I remember my mom would make sure we pray before we go to sleep. And the first thing we do in my little bed, I lie, Heavenly Father, hear my cry. You know what I'm talking about. Lord, protect me through this night. Keep me safe to morning light. Sometimes I would imagine how many people actually go to sleep without that even basic prayer as childs. I learned that prayer as a kid. My, I do it with my son every night before he goes to sleep. Say your prayers, like, and I'll stand there by him before I, and I'm praying with him. He said, Heavenly Father, hear my cry. Lord, protect me through this night. You know who taught them that? The same person that taught me that. <laughs> but it's a continuation of those type of things that I think make the difference. So even in our slumber, <laughs> God will give us the power and the understanding, even in a rested state. To be, mm -hmm. to be in his presence, to be in his presence, saints. Amen. Don't take it lightly for the little things that be, can become well-doing. And I hope I'm, I'm, that didn't take anybody a different way. But what I'm saying is, if what my son has learned from my elder that was taught to me, and now I'm his elder, then you see how it, can, it continues to go on. And it can go and grow because the years, the years are coming to a place where now as a child, he's learning, I got to say my prayers. And in the morning before I go to work, I wake him up before I go to work. And I said, let's pray. He said, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Bless my day. Bless our day. That's, and he has a certain thing that he says. He says it different. Like sometimes he'll say the same thing. Sometimes he'll say, but as a child, as you grow, we can grow into adults and wisdom beyond our capacity to understand the full capability of what we are learning in the moments that get us into a graduated state, which I believe we all are in the Lord, where we can then say, well, you know what? I don't get frustrated. I'm not going to get frustrated. Okay, besides not getting frustrated, I'm not going to allow anything to diminish power of God that I walk with based on my fleshly response to what I'm branching in a spiritual state and in a natural state. You understand? You understand that? Even in a spiritual state, because sometimes we can pray so long and our anointing can be like, man, Lord, are you going to answer? But in the patience of praying will give us perseverance to conquer all things through and with the power of the almighty God that we serve. Because he is, let me remind us tonight, he is a great, big, wonderful God. And I can see the sign right now. God is a good God. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. And my travailing is not going to be in vain because as I'm traveling with the covering of God, I will gain strength through every one of these new experiences or into anything that I'm believing God for, because as I exercise the patience, it will allow the perseverance to then come a little bit sooner. So that when that thing comes to a place where it can be conquered, that's where we find the answer of God. I promise you, I'm a, I have a message coming. Or maybe a whole series, you know, called the answer of God. <laughs> Amen. Some, Sometimes we can, that maybe that'll be next month's theme, the answer of God. And sometimes it can seem so long down the road before we receive an answer. But in patience and the perseverance, God's anchor will, with God's answer will allow us to conquer the things that we believe in God for 
to conquer a challenge, to conquer anything that will take away from us travailing, traveling through with the covering and the veil of Christ. To me, that's what travailing means. It travail. I know there's a proper definition, but to me, I'm traveling through this life. I'm traveling through this day to day. I'm traveling through what God get, teaches me experiences to give me the wisdom and understand a greater understanding, which our pastor prays for every Sunday, a deeper a deeper understanding of your word and your possibilities. Yes, I say yes and amen. Because the more I get, the more he'll give me. Yeah, you gotta catch that. The more I get, the more he'll give me. So the greater understanding I have, the more he can then say, okay, well, I'm gonna give you a little bit more. I'm gonna give you a little bit more to get you on down this road, <laughs> to get you through something that you never thought it possible. To, to say, hey, Come on over here, I'm gonna show you something. And then we, I gotta take flight and go that way. So if he can show me what he's trying to trying to, trying to tell me or give me. Amen, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. 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 I promise you, I hope this may somebody get something to grab because the glory is the gratifying part of his grace. Let me say that again, the glory is the gratifying part of his grace. So if, if, if my meditation mandates and, and, and gives me the sanction for what I've been given to say, then his mercy would be something I could share. Then I could share his grace and mercy. And then I could talk about it freely or in a way to where it makes sense and it connects because it's renewed daily with the power, with the presence, and through my praise. My goodness. Oh, oh man. So if I don't, if I don't persevere, I will never conquer. But if I don't exercise patience, I may not get the answer in a timely fashion in which I'm asking. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Travel through with the veil of the anointing, with the veil of the presence of the Holy Ghost, with the with the, with the, the veil of, of of understanding, with the travail I have to travel through, and then I will be in the covering in the presence of God. Yes, God. To where my patience, my patience will prove my praise. Oh my goodness. I, I I I can't even say I will. I've never been faced with something where I had to exercise patience, mm. and I may and I got the full understanding of what that thing was that I had to say. I just I have to I have to find peace, and if I couldn't find the peace, I sure I sure had had to say I'm gonna just I'm just gonna persevere through this. I'm just gonna get through it. Even if I couldn't find the peace in the moment, saints, even when we can't find the peace right then, at the moment of experience and and whatever, attack or even some things that we put ourselves through. Needless pain, as Pastor used to say. Why suffer needless pain when you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Just rest in his presence. Yes, God. And persevere because perseverance will make you conquer as long as your focus is set as that flint and God is the rock that it is set in. Oh, man, I have to set my eyes as a flint and my focus in the presence of God so he can allow me to persevere and experience the tranquility of peace no matter where I find myself. Yes, he, yes, always, yes. Always, he is always present. He is always there. We are never alone. We are never alone because God is our cover. God is our, our everything. God is our inertia to move our limbs. God is the strength of our healing. Yes. That's why perseverance will make you conquer. I promise you this. Ain't no way some of the people that 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 are experiencing things will get to a place where they can hop on, hop on a hop on a flight as a reference and take a picture and you see the illuminating power of the glory of God coming through said person. And you're like, wow, 
because that perseverance made it so. So that same perseverance is then applied to you through your Holy Ghost to be able to speak healing and strength into your life. The one, there's a few people that I know God wants me to connect with and I, and I will make, he will allow me to allow us to be able to make it happen because I believe in that touch. God is going to do some things, whether it brings encouragement, whether it brings an enlightenment to what he wants them to experience. And, to, and maybe it will be the added strength that they need to add to their, the, the persevering strength that they walk with because the Holy Ghost lives in them. And I will challenge those people that need a touch to then ask God to allow me to persevere and use the power that you have placed in me to then call, call the blessing as I need it in this moment. Call it unto yourself. Place the healing power upon yourself. I don't know why I'm going this way right now. I do, because God wants me to say it. The presence of God that you walk with could be the prevailing deliverance that you need if you just... <laughs> Same way with unseemly circumstances, I grab my hand and say, Lord, I can't, I, I can't do this without you, Lord God. Give me what I need in this moment. Touch me where I need to be touched. I need your anointing and your healing power in my life. Allow it to flow in a way to where it will touch everything, every, go every place in my body that needs touch. I'm sharing that. I felt to share that in my Holy Ghost tonight. That part right there. <laughs> we're speaking from a place of reverence and a place of, of perseverance tonight, saints. I'm going to ask Sister Petty to read this last scripture. because I don't want to be before you long tonight because I know the time is coming. But I just want you to understand that in, in the presence of God, in the presence gives us power to persevere. In the presence of God gives us the strength, gives us, all of us, the strength to then persevere, push, push. Don't just be pushed, but push. My goodness, I wish I could, I wish I could really what I hear in saying push right now. Mm. Don't just be put. Let me say it again. And I'll do my best to say this in a way to where you understand. Don't just be pushed. But push. Yes. <laughs> this is. You have. The living power of God working in you in such a way that if you just push, mm, 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 you talk about getting an answer. Yes. You talk about receiving some more glory. You talk about getting the, uh, uh, when he prays it, there's a few things when he prays on Sunday, when pastor prays on Sunday morning, give him deep there and a greater understanding of you, God. When you push, and you're not just being pushed, the presence of God will persevere in your life to where the presence can, is unmistakable. And God will answer in that push. And you say, Lord God, even if you have to reach back and, and, and imagine you're pushing yourself. <laughs> wow. Now imagine yourself praying in a way to where you, you, you imagine yourself putting your hands on yourself without touching yourself even. Allow the spirit man and the focus to come in a way and say, Lord, push me into your presence. Push me into your yes. oh. Man, the push will preserve the answer of God. Hmm. It's coming to, there's some, I mean, I promise you this, this, the answer, the answer 
of God yes. is upon us in a way to where it will prove that he is God. Let's write that down. The answer of God prove that he is man. Oh my goodness. The answer. Good. The answer of God. Sister, sister, oh man. I know the time is coming. The, can you read uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 7, verse 7? Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, 1, seven. 1, verse 17. I think it's 1. It says 2 Corinthians 1. And 17. And 17. Second Corinthians one and seventeen one and ten one and seventeen. Yes. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. Was that the right one? Seven. 17. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. That's Se a good second Corinthians that 7 17. Yes. Okay. Second Corinthians 7. I think one is no, there's no 17. There's one uh one in 17. One in se sorry about that. Okay, second Corinthians one in 17. Okay, second one. Oh, that was this one I just read. Was that the one? Yes. Okay. When I when I was there, when I therefore was thus minded, did I use likeness or the things that I purpose? The things that I purpose. Do I use purpose according to the flesh? That with me there should be that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. Hmm. Man, oh man. Read it one more time. Okay. When I was, when I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should, with that with me, let me read this over. Paul. Yeah, I had to read it a couple of times too. Yes, I got it. Okay, when I therefore was thus minded, did I use likeness or the things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. There is a balance to everything. <laughs> Man, when I when I was directed to that in in where I was studying, where I was studying from, and I found um, I found this one, and my notes are kind of scribbled. I'm sorry that it got a little confusing before you read it. But when I found this, yes, yes, no way, no way. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way I could be in my flesh and get a yes. But there is no way that if I am balanced and fully focused, that the God will say, no way, no way. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's from that, I think so. Because I can't be guided by what my, how my flesh wants to respond. Mm -hmm. I can't be 
guided by what my flesh says. Oh, well, they, 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 this is this, is that, that is this. No, 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 no. That's God is not the author of confusion. No, he's not. So in my flesh, there's when there's this is how it came to me. <laughs> and I hope we get something out of this. In my flesh, there's no way I can get a yes, 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 yes. Oh, please. You got it, my son. Go ahead and run. Travail. Persevere. Do, just do it. There's no way. With, with the focus and the anointing and the presence of God, I was like, God was like, yeah, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead on. He's up there like, oh, he's with us like, oh, man, you got this. You did. You, you responded real good on this one. But we don't want him to be like, no, 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 no. Sorry. That was all on you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we don't want to be like, oh, no. What was you thinking? No, 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 no. Man, we want him to say yes, yes, yes. That was good. That was really good. Not only is it good, but I'm with you. And then I'm going to add this to you. I'm going to give it to you just because you responded the right way. I don't want the Lord going like, nah, man, no, 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 prophet, pastor, what was you like? Come on, man. You, this is the new day. This is the new season. Like, no, 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 no. You, we don't want, I don't want them like that. We don't want the Lord like that. So just stay in the yes. Yeah. And outside of my, my fleshly understanding, I want the glory of God to work for me in a way to where God is like, man, you, you did that when you got through that, you got through that. You know what I'm saying? Because if we, if we, if we choose a negative response, then what is God? How does that allow God to bring peace and perseverance and understanding that our praise is of it, give, adding no sorrow to anything that we do positively for the Lord? Or how we respond is sometimes how He will take the respect of, of our relationship and respond. So I want him like, yeah, yeah, man, you did. That was it. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that forward like that. Thank you for delivering the word like that. Thank you for not getting so upset. Thanks for not getting frustrated. Thanks for not even not being like, oh, man, Lord, I thought you were with me. And then start talking all this, this side neck stuff. Because frust I'm frustrated. I'm so I'm like, oh, well, maybe he don't have me. And I, I'm just going to figure it out myself. I've been doing this a long time. But you ain't been doing it a long time without, without the Lord. That's the thing. <laughs> you got to remember. We got to remember. It ain't been without the Lord and the grace of God and the mercy that walks with the daily to get us through some of these things. So oh, all yeah. I'm to the true remind us is that when God says it is, it is. And when sometimes we can pull it back and be like, oh, well. Oh, this just seems to be so much. <laughs> and trust me, I'm not speaking from a place of, of non-understanding <laughs> or without experience. I'm just like, oh, man, Lord, like, seriously? But it's not on him. It's on how I respond in that moment when I'm experiencing said thing. It's in the moment when we say, well, Lord, beyond my beyond my understanding give me a deeper revelation of your word give me a deeper revelation to where the the scriptures that I, I bring forward to the people actually touch and bring something forward that actually feeds and heals in areas or ad, ad, admonishes or <laughs> exalts into an area where we get the focus to be like oh that makes sense to me too pastor that makes sense to me too, man. I can, we could talk about this tomorrow on a call. Just saying, you know, what you talk about really hit me in a way because it's hitting me right now. I can't always respond from a negative standpoint or from a place of not reflecting on what God has already brought me through. And I'll be done in the way tonight. I hope I didn't take too long, but I just want to remind us that a fleshly response is not in the reverence of our relationship. So we have to then use what we've been given to walk in the understanding and prevail and travail and perseverance will always make us conquer in Jesus. Amen. Jesus name. I hope we have enough time to get the prayer requests and everything else, but I just thank you for listening and, 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 and 
Oh, pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that the saints got something out of what you gave me today. I thank you for allowing it to fall on good soil, Lord God, and that it could be applied in our day-to-day -day walk and be a benefit to the saints tonight, Lord God. I'm asking you to bless, bless everyone tonight and bless everything moving forward, Lord God, our, our Friday morning prayer and whatever announcements will come, Sunday morning service, Lord God. We ask you to charge the atmospheres already in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for allowing me the space and time to deliver your word tonight. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let it be a blessing and let it edify the temples of those who are the saints that find themselves here, Lord God. And I'm asking you to bless and, and, and do whatever is needed in each household represented here tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Hackett, for that word. Elder Harris? Pastor Harris? Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a powerful, powerful word. Uh, 